Hello dear students, welcome to Ganesh Nursing Academy once again. So we are discussing about important FCQs on ECG. So till now we have discussed uh, around 20 questions on uh, ECG. So let's continue with the uh, next questions. Okay, we will discuss few more questions on uh, ECG. Okay. So question number 21, which of the following is a bipolar lead? Option A, ABM that is augmented voltage left. Option B, AV, IVR that is augmented voltage right. Option C, AVF augmented voltage put and uh, option D is a 1 okay lead 1 so here these are the options okay they are asked for uh, which one which of the following is a bipolar lead okay so totally we have 12 lead ECG okay we have a 12 lead ECG okay we have 12 lead ECG so in this 12 lead ECG we can classify it okay this 12 lead ECG are classified into unipolar lead Unipolar leads, okay, bipolar leads, bipolar leads, and chest leads, chest leads, okay. So three classification here: unipolar leads, bipolar leads, and the chest leads. Okay. So which are the unipolar leads? This A B L, okay, A B R, and A B F. So augmented voltage left, augmented voltage right, and augmented voltage put. These are all unipolar leads. Bipolar leads are okay. One lead one, lead two, and lead three. So these three lead one, lead two, lead three are a bipolar leads. Chest leads are V one, V two, V three, V four, V five, and V six. These are the chest leads. Okay. So unipolar leads are AVL, AVR, AVF. Okay, then bipolar leads are 1, 2, lead 1, lead 2, lead 3 are bipolar leads and chest leads are V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. So these are the chest leads. So, so they asked which of the following is a bipolar lead. So it, these all AVL, AVR and AVA, this one AVF are unipolar leads. It is a lead 1, it is a bipolar lead. Okay, so I hope this concept is clear for you. Okay dear students, let's continue with the next question. Question number 22. A nurse is reading ECG and she finds that MIEC changes in lead V1, V2, V3 and V4 and she interprets that patient is suffering from Option A, septal wall MI Option B, interior wall MI Option C, interceptal wall MI Option D, inferior wall MI Okay So this is a question See here the nurse is she reads the ECG of patient in the MRF room or in a ICU and she finds that uh, there is a ECG change, MI ECG changes in the ECG strip, okay. And she comes to know that this MI ECG changes in where leave V1, V2, V3 and V4, okay. And she interprets that patient is suffering from, okay. So here, we have total 12 lead ECG, okay, we have total 12 lead ECG. And in 12 lead ECG, there is a, this all ECG, the you know, pattern will be run in all 12 lead ECG, okay. So this portion is belongs to AVL, this portion is belongs to AVF, okay. Then there will be AV, R, okay. So like that the lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, okay. And there will be V1, so like this V2, so V3. So these are the portion of this all leads, okay. So if she finds, okay, EC change, that is ST segment elevation, T wave inversion, all these things, MI EC changes in AVL, okay, AVF, AVR. So this is what she has to see, okay, in which portion of ECG, in which portion of lead, there is a ECG changes, okay. So according to the portion, in which portion of ECG strip, the MI EC changes have been taken place, based on that we can make out whether the patient is suffering from septal wall MI, anterior wall MI, or interceptal wall MI, or inferior wall MI, okay. So, when we see, we have to make a note of EC changes, okay. We have to make a note of a myocardial EC changes in a different leads. And based on that, we can make out a which part of the heart is impacted, okay. Suppose, if there is a, in V1 and V2, okay, in V1 and V2 lead, if there is a ST segment elevation, okay, if there is a ST segment elevation, 
ओके एस टी सेगमेंट एलिवेशन दिस इज पी क्यू दिस इज एस टी सेगमेंट एंड दिस इज ओके सो इफ यू फाइंड इन बी वन एंड बी टू इफ दर इज इफ दिस कैंड ऑफ इजी चेंजेस इट इज अट इज वॉट इट इज अ सेप्टल वॉल एम आई इट इज सेप्टल वॉल एम आई ओके सो वेन यू वेन एन अर्थ फाइंड इट इज एम आई इज चेंजेस इन बी वन एंड बी टू लीड when she looks at this strips and she finds that the if there, there is a mi is it changes in b1 and b2 load so this is a septal volume if same thing happen in b3 and b4 load okay so this same pattern of is it changes happens in b3 and b4 load it is a anterior volume it is a anterior wall my card is perfect if she finds same changes in a b3 and b4 okay sorry She finds it in V5 and V6. Okay, same is the changes like a ST segment elevation, T wave inversion, and formation of Q wave in V5 and V6. It is like a lateral wall, am I? Lateral wall, yeah, am I? Okay. So like this, if we find same changes in the lead two, lead two. Lead three and A V F. Okay, so this is a inferior wall M I. Inferior wall M I. If she finds myocardial E C G changes, myocardial E C G changes that is S T segment elevation, T wave inversion, formation of Q wave in lead two, lead three and A V F. It is a inferior wall M I. Okay, and if it is in V five, V six. Okay. A V F, okay, V five, V six, and A V F, okay. So this is lateral wall, am I? Lateral wall, am I? Okay. So depending upon which part of the, uh, which in which lead is there is a is it change? Based on that, we can make out a, okay, am I? Now here, option A, that is a septal wall, am I? Okay, septal wall, am I? Means there should be, okay, V one and V two. So there be there should be uh, like myocardial ST changes in and V1 and V2 lead V1 and V2 lead in V1 and V2 lead there should be ST segment elevation and T wave inversion and formation of Q wave. So that is septal volume. So septal volume is my if myocardial ST changes myocardial infarction ST changes that occurs in V1 and V2 it is a septal volume. My. So anterior volume means if it is happens in V3 and V4. Okay, if the ST segment elevation T wave inversion and Q wave formation that happens in V3 and V4 it is a anterior volume. My. Interoceptal MI means if it is happens in V1, V2, V3 and V4. Okay, so in both from V1 to V4, if there is a ST segment elevation, T wave inversion and a Q wave formation that happens in a V1, V2, V3 and V4, it is a interoceptal volume. And inferior volume MI, what is the inferior volume MI? There will be lead two, lead three and A V F. Okay, so if the ST segment elevation, T wave inversion and Uh, Q wave formation that happens. Okay, all that MI is it changes that takes place in lead two, lead three, and lead four uh, areas. Okay, it's, it is a inferior wall. MI inferior wall. Okay, so same like lateral wall MI. When we can say lateral wall MI, lateral wall MI. So we can say if there is a is it changes in lead one. Okay, then A B F B five and B six. So if you find ST segment elevation, T wave inversion and Q wave formation in lead one, A V F, V five and V six. So this is a lateral wall M I. Okay. So here in the question, a nurse is reading E C G and she finds that a M I E C changes, M I P L E C changes in lead B one, B two, B three and B four. So and she interpret that the patient is suffering from. So there is a E C M I E C changes in B one, B two, B three and B four. Okay. So that is nothing but a Okay, if it is if it changes in V1 and V2, it is a septal wall M I. If it is if it changes in V3 and V4, it is a anterior wall M I. So here V1 to V4, if that changes is there, it is a interoceptal wall M I. Okay, so inferior wall M I means that a M I myocardial issue changes in lead two, lead three, and A B F. Okay, and lateral wall M I if it happens, if there is a myocardial infarction issue changes in lead one, A B F, V5, and V6. So the answer for this one is a interoceptal wall M I. Okay, here the anterior part and the septum okay so both atrial septum and ventricular septum and entry portion of the uh, lead okay entry portion of the uh, heart is infected 
okay so that the it will be case okay dear students let's see next question question number 24 qrs complex in ecg represents option a atrial depolarization or atrial systole option b ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole option c ventricular depolarization or ventricular diastole okay and option d is isoelectrical phase okay see here depolarization is nothing but a systole so depolarization is nothing but a uh, systole that is a contraction okay so depolarization and systole it is nothing but a contraction it may be atrial contraction or ventricular contraction okay repolarization or a diastole it is a relaxation okay it may be atrial relaxation or a ventricular relaxation so always you remember that uh, depolarization and systole is it is nothing but a, it is related to contraction okay repolarization and diastole it is related to relaxation of a wall of either atrium or ventricle okay so see here what the question they asked qrs complex in ecg pattern represents okay so first of all first one is option a atrial repolarization or atrial systole see here this atrial atrial activity is always okay so atrial activity is always belongs to the p wave okay so p wave is the one which represents the atrial depolarization or atrial systole okay p wave represents atrial depolarization or atrial systole okay so this is not right options here okay next ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole okay so this qrs complex this q r s okay so q r s so this qrs complex indicates it represents so qrs complex represents this qrs complex represents ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole so always qrs complex represents ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole okay now what does ventricular repolarization or ventricular diastole represents it is a t wave okay it is a t wave so t wave represents ventricular repolarization or ventricular diastole that is ventricular relaxation okay so that is represented by t wave okay so what is this isoelectrical phase so isoelectrical phase it is a st segment okay the st segment no so this s wave okay so here s wave and here is a t wave so between this one this is there is a segment so this st segment st segment represents isoelectric phase of the heart okay so these are the different wave which represents different uh, activity of the heart okay so what does the p wave represents p wave represents atrial depolarization or atrial systole qrs complex represents ventricular depolarization or ventricular systole that is ventricular contraction and t wave represents that is a ventricular depolarization or ventricular diastole and what does the st segment okay so this st segment st segment represents isoelectrical phase of the heart okay so this is all about the qrs uh, qrs complex in qrs uh, complex in ecg represents it is a ventricular depolarization or a ventricular systole okay so this ventricular uh, repolarization and ventricular diastole is represented by the t wave okay so it is a wrong option and isoelectrical phase is also not represented by the qrs complex it is also wrong option so option b that is a ventricular depolarization or a ventricular systole is the right answer here okay let's see next question dear aspirants that is question number 26 25 the drug of choice for ventricular tachycardia so ventricular tachycardia is nothing but vt ventricular tachycardia okay option a is adenosine option b is deltaism option c amadrone option d is a xylocaine okay so here already you know the what the what is the pattern of ventricular tachycardia there will be broad qrs complex and t wave inversion this is the pattern of a ventricular tachycardia so this is the pattern of ventricular tachycardia okay so let's see this one so ultimately you have to start with the chest compressions cpr you have to start and you have to get ready for a defibrillation this is a shockable rhythm very best treatment is a uh, defibrillation okay so, and what is the drug of choice for this kind of rhythm is if the patient is running with this kind of rhythm and pulse is also present then we can administer drugs so drug of choice is adenosine diuretism option c is amadrone and option d is a xylocaine okay so xylocaine is a drug of choice okay lidocaine or xylocaine is a drug of choice for a, this kind of rhythm okay whereas adenosine it is a drug of choice for the supraventricular tachycardia okay so diuretism and amadrone amadrone is a anti arrhythmic drugs we use commonly but uh, this adenosine we use for the supraventricular tachycardia and xylocaine we use for the uh, management of ventricular tachycardia okay so the option d that is a xylocaine or lidocaine is a drug of choice for treatment of this ventricular tachycardia okay and adenosine is a drug of choice for the treatment of a supraventricular tachycardia okay so i hope this question is clear for you students let's see next question question number 23 wenke back pattern of ecg is also known as okay so wenke back pattern so this wenke back pattern of ecg is also known as option a first degree wave block 
ऑप्शन बी सेकेंड डिग्री एवी ब्लॉक मोबिट टाइप वन ऑप्शन सी सेकेंड डिग्री एवी ब्लॉक मोबिट टाइप टू एंड ऑप्शन डी इज दर्ड डिग्री एवी ब्लॉक और कंप्लीट हार्ड ब्लॉक ओके सो दिस वेंके बैक पैटर्न ऑफ पीसीजी इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज सेकेंड डिग्री एवी ब्लॉक मोबिट टाइप वन ओके सो ऑलरेडी आई हेव शोन यू वॉट इज अजी पैटर्न हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई फर्स्ट डिग्री सेकेंड डिग्री थर्ड डिग्री सी इन फर्स्ट डिग्री आई विल शो यू इन फर्स्ट डिग्री If P wave is present, okay, Q wave which is appears late after the Q wave, okay, and T wave. So again here P wave, okay, Q R S complex and T wave. So P Q R S T, P Q R S T, okay. So see here P wave appeared, okay. So P wave appeared here and after that Q wave appeared late, okay, very late after. That. so pr interval okay so here pr interval is prolonged so when you see there is a prolongation of pr interval okay prolongation of pr interval so if there is only presence of prolongation of pr interval that is a first degree a block okay so first degree a block means there is only, only problem is prolongation of pr interval okay normal pr interval is 0.12 second to 0.20 second here it is more than 0.20 second so this is a classical clinical classical manifestation classical is the change in first degree a block okay so what is the is change in second degree mobit type 1 and type 2 okay so here there is a second degree a block mobit type 1 second degree a block mobit type 2 so here two are there so what is this uh, second degree a block mobit type 1 what is is this change you can see here so here there will be p wave q r s complex and t wave will be there again here p wave QRS complex, okay, and T wave will be there. So here P wave, then absence of QRS complex. Again P wave, QRS complex, T wave. Okay. So P Q R S T P Q R S T P wave. So there is absence of QR QRS complex. Yes. Okay. So this is a Second degree A block mobile type one. So in second degree A block mobile type one, what is the change here? He see here this is a here is a normal PR interval. PR interval is normal here. PR interval is normal. Here PR interval is prolonged. PR interval is gradual. Progressively PR interval is prolonged. Okay, it is prolonged. And here, so there is a gradual prolongation of PR interval followed by there is a Absence of QRS complex. Here the QRS complex, QRS complex, QRS complex absent. Okay, QRS complex is absent. And then again there is a normal PR. This is a normal PR. PR interval is normal. So this kind of pattern of ECG we find. This is a second degree A block morbid type one. In second degree A block morbid type one, there is a Okay, there is a progressive prolongation of PR interval. So there is slow progression of. So this is normal PR interval. Here there is a PR interval is progressing, progressing, and then for what happens here? PR interval prolongs. Okay, progressively prolongs, and then what happens here? The P is not followed by QRS complex. If this is a pattern is there, it is a second degree A block morbid type one. Second degree A block morbid type one. Here there is a progressive prolongation of PR interval, and after that what happens here? P wave is not followed with the QRS complex. If that is there, it is a Second degree A block, okay. Second degree A block, morbid type one. And next one is, what is second degree A block, morbid type two? In second degree A block, morbid type two. In this one, here there is a P wave, QRS complex, T wave, okay. P wave, QRS complex, T wave, and here P wave. Not followed by QRS complex. Okay, here P wave. Okay, so P Q R S T P Q R S T. So here P wave P Q R S T. Okay. So here in what is the difference between difference in second degree A block morbid type two? What happens here? Here there is no progressive prolongation of PR interval. Okay, so here PR interval is normal. Okay, PR interval, PR interval, normal. Okay, and here also PR interval is normal. 
PR interval normal. Okay. But here the PV is not followed by QRS complex. QRS complex is absent. Okay. So QRS complex absent. Okay. Absent. And again here PR interval is normal. PR interval is normal. Okay. So here there is no pattern like a there is a progressive QRS complex. Uh, okay. Uh, there is progressive PR interval prolongation. That kind of pattern is not there. So PR interval will be normal. But there is a sudden absence of QRS complex. Okay. The P wave is not followed by QRS complex. Okay. If you find PR interval is normal, but P waves suddenly if the P wave is not followed by QRS complex, or so sudden there is an absence of QRS complex. If this kind of pattern is rule, it is a find in the ECG. It is a second degree U block mobile type two. Okay. And I already have discussed this uh, third degree U block. That is complete heart block. In this complete heart block, there is an independent. Okay. There is there is no coordination between the atrial activity and ventricular activity. So in this one, what happens? In this. Here the P wave may be okay. Immediately after the P wave there will be QRS complex. Okay, or P wave and QRS complex may be there may be wide gap. Okay, or sometimes what happens? P wave and QRS complex are may be merged. Okay, so here see here P wave, QRS complex, and P wave, P wave, QRS complex, P wave, P wave. QRS complex P wave. Okay, so here the atrial activity, atrial activity and ventricular activities are independently happening here. There is no coordination. So because of this, QRS complex may appear immediately after the P wave, or QRS complex appears late after the P wave, or sometimes P wave and QRS complex uh, merge, or a, uh, there is a this uh, uh, merging of a P wave and QRS complex. Okay, so this can happen in the Third degree U block or complete heart block because of there is a no coordination activity between, between the atrial activity and ventricular activity. Okay, so here Benke back pattern of ECG it is also known as second degree U block. Okay, so its second degree U block morbid type one is also known as Benke back pattern of ECG. Okay, so I hope all of you got this uh, differences in the atrial ventricular block.